Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'll be showing you how to handle this particular problem. Let's say you have a picture that you want to have in a standard 8x10 size, but you don't want to crop into the picture, so you have to expand the picture out a bit, and you end up with something like this, where it's expanded out. There is your 8x10, but you have this white stuff around the outside. I'll show you how to stretch your background just like that, to fill in those white spaces without making it look really weird or strange. Now if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and of course click on the share and share with all your friends through social media. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. And if you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, look for my complete training courses and you'll find a link right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so here's our original picture, and we want to put this into an 8x10, and you have two options on that. One, you can crop in to the 8x10 ratio, or two, you can expand the background out to fit 8x10. Let's look at those two options. I'll come down here to the crop tool right there. I have mine set at 8x10, which is the bottom on this list. There's 8x10. And if I click in here and drag, it gives me a box that's 8 by 10 ratio right there. I can now position this box bottom right hand corner. There we go. And let's just drag that up until it hits the top of the picture up there, right there. And there's the 8 by 10 ratio, but I'm losing a little bit of space on the left hand side over here. It's cropping into the picture. It's not bad. If I pull it over here a bit to the left, it doesn't look too bad, but it's kind of squeezed. We're, we're losing a bit of our, our space around our picture, kind of squeezed in there. But that's one option. You can just crop in and there's your 8x10. Let's say I wanted to have more space around the model here and not be in this tight. I didn't want to lose any of my picture in the background. So let's come over here to the right hand side and if I stretch this out so it goes clear here and just a little bit beyond the left hand side in there so I don't lose any picture here. It also goes way off the top so what I get is I need to stretch my picture to fit in this 8x10 but it'll be a better picture for my final output because I have more space around the model. I keep that a nice open feel but this is not getting too cramped up here at the top for instance. Okay so that's our basic thing. We're just going to use the 8x10 crop and take it out just a little ways beyond our picture and choose OK and there it is. It just kind of stretches that photo like that. Let's just zoom this back into fit screen. Now at this point, because we'll be actually changing the picture before we do anything else, make a copy of your background layer. There we go, just like that, and then hide that background. That's just your safety. You can always go back to your original image. It has a little bit larger canvas as you can see here, but there's your original picture untouched. That's our background safety. Okay, now the first thing you need to do is to take your image on the background copy now and make sure it's positioned where you want it up it right into the bottom right hand corner like that. You can also move your image around using the arrow keys on your keypad to get this exactly positioned. That just makes it a little bit easier for our cleanup in here so it's right on that edge. Now we can, if there's any little problems here, we can fix those up later on. So we have this little bit over here and a larger area up there. Now if you have a nice even background, even tone background, you can just stretch the background out, you know, up and down, left and right, and it will look just fine. In this case, though, we have a very complicated background, which makes it difficult to do a standard stretch. I can do a stretch to the left and right. Let me show you how that works. Now, this left to right stretch, if you have a detailed background, only works if you have a large area that you can stretch, like we have right in here. There's a lot of space before I get into the model. I can't do a stretch at the top because it's very, very small. I'll show you what happens if, if you do that. So start off here, left hand side, make sure we're on the correct layer. There we go. No feathering, leave that zero. And I'll just drag and go right up next to, but not touching the model, right there. Let's now go over to the move tool and then just grab that left side and pull this over. You can actually stretch your picture just like that. Now the reason why this works and looks okay is because we're doing a small stretch on a large background. So for the detail, this still works. 
and the edge here there's no seam showing because of course we're just selecting this part so this lines up exactly with that background in there so that makes your nice left side stretch so just undo or deselect that now again this only works this kind of stretch only works if either you're doing a very small stretch on a detailed background or if it's very smooth background you can go a lot further with that stretch but it also only works if you have a large area in here to do the stretch on let's see what happens if you try the same trick up here where it's just a very small area at the top so I'll grab the marquee tool let's just come down here I'll stretch this right down grab just like that so I'm just above her head right now and let's zoom out a bit so you can actually see what we're doing here. Just zoom out just a touch. There we go. I'll go to the Move tool. Grab this and I'll stretch this up. And you can see what happens. Because there's not a lot to stretch, you get these really strange vertical kind of stretches in here. The same thing would happen on the left if I chose just a little bit of left side and pulled that out to get these streaky effect. It doesn't look realistic. So the stretch technique worked over here. I had a large area that I could stretch. Doesn't work up here, the very, very thin area. Again, this will work if it's a real even background, like a blue sky or something. That'll work just fine. But if it's a complicated background, that technique's not going to work. So let's see what we can do here to fix that. Let's just deselect this. And the first thing I'll do is zoom in at that top up there and let's make sure we have white clear to the edge now it's not quite all the way to the edge it's a little bit of, of background showing in there see that so I want to fill that in fill it in with white come down here to the foreground background color grab the paint bucket and just click right inside that transparent area that fills that edge in so it's now pure white clear to the top of the page the reason why we had a little bit of transparency there is because we repositioned the photograph to get it exactly in the bottom left hand or bottom right hand corner rather right down there so when we did that it left a little bit of a thin line up there so we wanted to get rid of that thin line so it's just solid white clear to the top of the page now the reason for that little trick in there little, little cleanup adjustment is so we can use the magic wand and make sure you set on new tolerance doesn't really matter on this one and just click inside that white that should select that white area now it's a little bit over here see that it's kind of coming down and grabbing this side as well so there's a little bit of a white line on that side we need to fix that also let's just deselect and zoom over there to that side so if you can even see that there to real thin real thin right there real real thin small edge let's fix that go back here to fit screen and I'll do this quickly just by again grabbing the rectangular lasso let's just grab a bit of our background this way back to the move tool and just pull this over just just a touch just like that just outside that guarantees to clean out that right side edge so that's now clean we can deselect let's try this one more time with the magic wand click up here and this time it's just that area there so there's no white over here there's no white over here and it's now just this area right up in there okay now that we have that selected Here's a real fun bit. Just go up to Edit, come down to Fill Selection, and set this at Content Aware Fill, Blend Mode Normal, choose OK, and then Photoshop Elements goes in and tries to rebuild what's missing up in here and usually does a pretty good job depending upon your content. Now you may have some edge problems you need to fix. There may be some things that duplicate that you want to kind of hide the duplication, but this will get you real, real close. Let's just deselect that. And it's actually usable right now. It's actually not too bad, but let's zoom in and see what, what problems there are hiding up in here. Looks like we're okay. There's a little thin white line right there. You can kind of see that just a little, little thin line right there. We need to get rid of that little thin edge. That's just the edge of that selection. We can do that easily enough just using the clone stamp tool. There we go. And you can use any size you want on this one. I was leave that set the 40 pixel I have it at right now. Looks okay. I'm gonna start right in here. I'm gonna grab some of this and just put this up here to fill that in. So with the clone stamp tool, position where you want to copy from, hold the Alt key down like that. Whenever you see that little kind of target. 
That means that I'm holding down the Alt key, click at that point, then let go. You can then take that and copy that someplace else. So I'll put it right up here. I think that's a pretty good match position right there. And paint to the left, and that cleans that up. Let's just go ahead and do another one of those right in here. Get that bit out. Then it's just a matter of coming in and painting it. Now, if you have detail like this, you want to grab part of your detail and try to match that up with something up in the picture so that it looks very natural. You don't want to be ending up with something looking kind of odd or strange. So you might want to move this around a little bit and pick from different spots. And all I want to do is just to hide that kind of a strange line that's happening in there. Get a duplication like this happening. Go in there and try to hide that duplication as well to help to disguise where that seam is. Just kind of do that. This is a matter of just kind of going around and grabbing a few spots, a little couple of dust spots where I can fix at the same time here. It's not bad. Then work along and clean out that line. That's our first step. Now here we have this kind of strange duplication happening. So I'll grab down here, I'll pull it up to here and just pull that line up through and that helps to again hide where that seam is. Now here's another dark line so I'll come right against that edge, grab that, pull it up here, match my line. And see there it is, you can just kind of match that line up, pull left and right to clean that up. Now the reason you see that, you can actually see that clone overlay, that's right down here where it says clone overlay and align. That's what I'm doing on that one. And same thing here. It's kind of a triple thing happening in there. I'll just make some adjustments. Notice we're also getting some of our hair duplicated up in here. So you want to clean that out. Obviously we don't have any strange hairs showing in here. Gives you an idea of what Photoshop Elements is doing though. They're actually grabbing parts of the image around where you need to fill in and it's trying to recreate the look. And it's usually very, very good. It's just that sometimes it may grab the wrong part and you get some strange duplication things happening. And that's where you come in and work this in and just clean out some of that. I'm going to grab from over here, which is the right color to put in there, but it gives me a little different look. Again, so again, just a, a matter of coming in and doing some grabbing from different locations and clone stamping until you clean that line out. We're pretty close now to the right side edge. Okay, here's this. I'll grab it from right here this time, pull it down. Again, line that edge up like that. Whenever you can work along an edge, it actually is better for you because that also helps to disguise what you're doing in here. Some strange things happening up in here. We'll fix that. Let's get rid of this stuff first. And then I'll grab from down here and pull this up. And let's just put in a new edge up there. And that's not quite right. You may have to go back and do it a couple times to get exactly the right effect you need. This is the biggest problem with the this technique with the content aware fill is that it may put in things you don't want. But it it's fairly easy as you can see here to do this cleanup. Just a little bit of patience and you can do a real nice cleanup job on that. And we're just about there. Okay, we rebuilt that top section. Let's clean this stuff up in here. Again, if you have a line like that, work along that line. And right down here, and a little bit of strangeness right in there. You can clean that out. Okay, that's good. A little bit of hair showing right up here. This one's easy. I'll just grab from right down here and put that in. There we go. Let's now back out a little bit and see if anything else looks weird. Kind of these pink things happening down here and up there. I think I'm just going to get rid of that pink stuff. Not really sure what that is, but I can clean that out fairly quickly. I'm going to bring my brush size up a bit on this one. That should be better. 
So this part is just standard photo retouching at this point, just getting rid of things I don't like and keeping what I do like. Okay, let's look over here. This all looks fine. Kind of a weird little thing right there. Let's just hide that. And a bit right there. Those are just a little bit distracting. Okay, now we have this line here, which is matching this line there, that detail. I'm just going to come in and change the look of that a bit at the top so it doesn't match again. Okay, that's looking good. Let's back out a little bit further. And I think that's good. All right, let's go ahead now, fit screen, and there we go. We've now stretched the image on both left and right sides and use that content aware tool to fill in the top section. Looks like a little bit of a strange thing right up here. I didn't see it zoomed in, but I'm seeing it zoomed out. Just a little, a little line showing up there. I'm going to go ahead and fix that as well, just to make sure that everything's absolutely perfect. Okay, if I back out one notch, you can kind of see a little, little line right there. I'm not sure going to back when I zoom in, but just in case, Let's catch that as well. This is one of the reasons why I look at this at several different zoom levels because sometimes you'll see things at one zoom level that you won't see at a different zoom level. But fast fix with the clone stamp tool on that and we're all set. Okay, there it is. So here is our original right there. There's the original picture which we enlarged out to that 8 by 10 size and there it is with the image stretched, the background stretched to fit that 8x10 size without damaging our main subject. So there you go. That's how you can resize an image to a different size and then stretch the background as needed to make the whole thing fit. Don't forget to take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements. And again, there's a link for that right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.